Hi, I'm Will from Tested. And I'm Norm from Tested. And Patrick Norton's here. Hi. Hi, Patrick. How are you doing? I'm excited. It's There's Patrick Norton of Tech Thing. Tech Thing. <laughs> formerly of Techzilla, formerly of DLTV, formerly of Tech TV. We Who knows what all else? Savers. We've been talking to you for a very long time. It yes. Seems like. Not just this morning, but, you know, over the last decade or so. It's maybe. a small city. Yes, it is. Um, so what, what we're here today to do a new, uh, this is a premium video series we're doing. It's new, um, we're calling it Lego with Friends. So I'm Lego. the test pilot? You're the with test pilot. Friends. We've never done this before. It could be a complete disaster. Yes. Um, yeah. Normally when Norm and I build Lego, we race and it gets really ugly and then Norm loses at the end. And now I understand why I'm in between the two of you. Yeah. <laughs> so we have had a, uh, a love affair with Lego and we want to share it with people. And <laughs> also it seems like a great way uh, it's the build things in the chat. See, Catch up. See, you sound like San Francisco. You sound like Brooklyn. Okay. Right? Or I should say Jersey, actually. Because you're like, I want to share the love of the Lego community and establish a building yeah. and entrench the idea that you can use these interlocking brick systems to create mystery and magic and mystique and joy. And you're like, yeah, Norm and I throw down and beat the hell out of each other to see who's going to finish. Like, do you hide pieces from each other? No, Is no, it no, that no, ugly? No. Okay. It's all, it's, it's a pure contest of will when we do the contest. <laughs> it's just, it's just about focus over 2,000 pieces. Can you maintain focus over 2,000 pieces? For 2,000 pieces of Lego. Build? That's a lot of focus. There's a lot of focus. Um, Patrick, What's the last time you built a Lego kit for yourself? You have uh, children. Ironically, my son stole my Gandalf Hobbit Lego kit that I'd, I'd been saving for a year to put together mm -hmm. and snaked it out of my wife's desk and built it. So I, I got to finish the Gandalf like hat and, and the fireworks. <laughs> okay. Other than that, it's been pure freeform Lego and Duplo play for the last couple of years. Okay, all yeah. right. So uh, the kit we're going to build today, and typically when we do this, we do a big kit. We want to start you off with something uh, <laughs> simpler, but also really awesome. And none of us actually built this. This is no. Lego the Birds kit uh, from Lego Ideas. Have you heard of Lego Ideas? I have heard of Lego Ideas. Yeah, it was, it was called Kusu, a project, a uh, community-driven project where people submitted their own designs, right. my own creations. And uh, there have been, for example, the Ghostbusters vehicle, mm -hmm. several scientific research vehicles, the Mars Curiosity Kusu. Rover. Uh, there are things, there goes the, uh, the Curiosity. I have a lot of them at home. There's some, the first Minecraft kit was a Kusu? Yes, and now there's so, a whole series there's a whole of them. Line. And this is a whole uh, birds, which is, it's beautiful. And I thought it was really appropriate because there are three birds. Hey, Norm, wait, hold on. And there there's are, one, on. one, two, three of us. Three of us. Um, <laughs> and the great thing is, you would think that they would include in the box three separate packages for each of the birds. No. But no, that's not how really? it works. <laughs> it is a hodgepodge. So there's going to be some knolling, and we're going to introduce you to that in a second. Uh, first of all, we're going to choose our birds. I think it's an, a European swallow, some sort of hummingbird, and then a blue jay. Yes, yeah. and instruction manuals for each person. Patrick, as the guest, I think you, you get you to get go the first. You get the first pick um, of the three. Here, let, me, let me show everyone the three. And then blue, red, or green. I have my own favorite. You, don't have to, you can head. pick your favorite bird. You don't have to, you don't have to pick yeah, random. Yeah, don't, don't choose at random. Don't choose a random? No. Oh. Which is, I gotta take the hummingbird. I'm gonna be vile and take the hummingbird. You like the green one? Hummingbirds are rad. Okay. Hummingbirds are amazing. Yeah. I'd never really seen a hummingbird until I moved to California. And then they were outside my window and staring at Always. my face. Always. And, and hanging out with the bees in the in the rosemary bushes. Bird. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Norman Chan? Dibs on number one. The You're going for the sparrow? I'll, I'll take the blue jay. Like and you know what? I may have been mistaken. They are numbered. So each of these has a number. Um, I'm bag one. Who's no, bag two? No, no, it'll tell you which bag you are on the inside. I like that there's a, a descriptive text about the bird inside the box um, oh. in three different languages. Calibri Thalicinus. You're bag three, Thalicinus. I believe. And Will, you're bag, I'm bag two. two. And okay. I'm bag one. So it's going to be a fairly simple kit. Three, two, one, go! It's not a race. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know how many pieces. Uh, there's it's 580 they, pieces all right, told, I how think. How they're distributed. Um, <laughs> the Blue Jay is known as the dick of the bird world. <laughs> He's a jerk. He runs the other birds off of the bird feeder. Um, but they're easy prey for faster flying predators such as hawks and owls. So. Wow. How, come, how are there so many pages for each of these? These are complex builds. The, the red bird, the sparrow. bird, the sparrow, has 68 pages of build. 
This was kind of, I mean, for pieces per dollar, this was kind of an expensive kit, as I yes. recall, right? It was about um, 50 bucks? Yeah, $45. Um, it was released first of the year. I think they're still readily available. Um, I took the Lego that I got for Christmas back and got this instead. <laughs> wow. What did you, which one did you, which kit did you get? The Guardians Christmas? of the Galaxy kit, which I was not was super it keen on. It was the Prison Break. Which was cool because it had. I do not like playset. It was cool because it had Rocket and Groot. I was going to say. But also a playset. Rocket heavily armed. Heavily armed is a good thing. Yeah, exactly. So we should start building. Let's let's do this. I love that these kits, uh, the Lego Ideas ones, typically come with some uh, information about what you're building, whether it's. You know, a, a science lab story. Look at that. Popping out with a knife. That is, that is a, that's a blade. Well, that's not even a knife. <laughs> so, Patrick, when you build Lego at home, do you know? I have never heard that word before. No. Oh, oh. we get it. Well, hold on. We, t- we get to teach you something? Yes. This is exciting. Everybody gets to teach me something. It's um, awesome. <laughs> Uh, Knolling is a thing that Adam introduced us that we always used to do before. Because we, we built Lego, we started building Lego with our friend Gary, who I think you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've never uh, actually seen Gary before midnight, but yes. Fair enough. Oh, right. Oh, right. <laughs> um, his, his, uh, his wife introduced him to Lego, and he was like, this is strangely meditative and fun. And then invited everybody over to his house to build Lego one day. And we went over and built Lego, and the next thing you know, I was spending a fairly ludicrous amount of money on Lego every year. <laughs> um, so thanks, Gary and Leah. The uh, the knolling is what we used to call making the brickyard. So when we started, Norm and I built a Super Star Destroyer. Norm built a Super Star Destroyer. I built a Death Star playset. Each of those is like 3,000 pieces. Oh, my goodness. So we dumped all the bags out that we could fit on a table and just filled the table with bricks as far as the eye could see. <laughs> that, it turns out, was kind of a mistake. Um, but it was probably awesome until you realized you couldn't find anything. It was very meditative and fun. And you did have a general sense of where things went, but it took a lot of time. So we don't do that for the big kits as often anymore, um, especially in a race so context. So is to know to just spread all of the parks? It's to array in a, in a comfortable grid. And I think it's, I, I, uh, we talked about the derivation of the term with Adam at some point. I don't, I don't remember yes, what it is now. It's Noel, the designer Noel. Uh, John Knoll, right? Not John Knoll. John Knoll John is the VFX from supervisor yeah. from ILM. Uh, but Knoll is in the furniture company Knoll. Uh, K-N-O-L-L. There's a Wikipedia page. Really? Uh, for the concept. And basically, uh, a simplified way of Knolling is just to separate by the color of the brick. Uh, and then, however the schema in your head, you, you best parse shapes and objects. <laughs> um, so, I, I like that each of these birds are, uh, there's a dominant color. Yeah. Red for me, green, no, no, uh, green for Patrick, and blue for Will. And then, you know, it's actually not that many pieces. I think we should, should null and then evaluate our nulling. This should be an easy episode. I'm having a little bit of trouble with some of these pieces. They're not stacking as well as they usually do. I'm supposed to stack them? You don't have to stack them. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> it's all optional. This is all what makes you happy, man. I don't know, like, the idea of being able to assemble a kit before midnight without the help of a small child is kind of exciting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, as I told my wife, yeah, we're gonna, this is a hard day, because these, these, it sounds crazy, but we do, when we do these Lego builds, we usually do most of the thing in one day, mm-hmm. which when you're talking about 580 pieces isn't that big a deal, but the day that we built the sand crawlers was, was kind of dark by the end of it, because it was like 3,000 pieces, and my f- <laughs> fingers were actually raw by the end of that one. Which, again, I don't expect sympathy, because my wife was at home wrestling with a two-year-old. <laughs> um, but, you know, the laughter and the derision could have been, weren't, weren't entirely necessary, I think, sweetheart. Yes, they were. Probably. It's the balance of the marriage. Earned, earned and deserved. Oh, my goodness. Um, how many, yeah, it seems like Will probably has the most pieces. All right. I think so. I have the biggest bird, I, I think. I was going to say. Jays are fairly large. We actually watched a blue jay grow in our backyard this last Ooh. year. Watched it molt, which was really funny. Oh, did they, they start out a different color, right? Yeah, they started this sort of gray puffball. Yeah. And then they start to shed the gray puffiness and turn into their 
angry blue armored selves. So there's a nest that was accessible and, and close by that you can monitor? And yeah, we started redoing the backyard, so we pulled down, we had this huge feeder up. So the bird comes by every so often to yell at us about the feeder not being there. <laughs> so I'll throw some peanuts out in the backyard and he'll just nuke on the peanuts and distribute them uh, half into his gullet and half into my neighbor's uh, garage. Nice. It's going to be really awesome because he just built this amazing, like, sort of new roof on his garage and uh, making it sort of match the craftsman exterior of the house. <laughs> and he's going to find, like, 10,000 acorns oh, stuffed man. in the weird little spots. And he's going to know exactly why they're there. <laughs> well, the, so the kid thing, the kid with the birds, the kid thing, my daughter is super into the hummingbirds, which you started on and I cut yeah. you off, I think. Like, the hummingbirds are... Like, we had hummingbirds where I grew up in northeast Tennessee, but they were a rare, special thing you see. Yeah. And here, they're kind of like we the weeds of the bird world. Because I think we have it at different times of the year at my house on the coast, we have three or four different species. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, male and female, too. Um, and they're, they're just all over the place, which is, which is super cool. So you can hang a hummingbird feeder out and see, like, five different kinds of birds uh, at any given time, and they fight. Uh, yeah, they fight. They fight. They fight with everything. They fight with blue jays. They fight with hawks. They fight oh, with yeah. crows. What's the hummingbird fight style? They zoom in really fast. They come at you real hard. Like it's yeah. all. It's it's like it's like um, nothing but huge ego bar fight, right? So they come yeah. out with their chests all out and they'll dive bomb you and yeah. then fly away. Um, Actually, they do that to people too. They do that to us in our backyard they, sometimes. My, my my next door neighbor, he was moving something around and the hummingbird spotted him. He said he came, he went to like, he saw the hummingbird was in his backyard and, and, and kind of checking out the, the last kind of vestiges of a blossom on this tree back mm -hmm. there. And the hummingbird suddenly, um, he went to reach for his camera, he wanted to take a picture of it. And as he was pulling his camera around, the hummingbird spotted him, ran straight for his chest until it was about six inches away, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> broke right and disappeared. Wow. Well, we, we, so we have hummingbird wars, and then we also have hummingbird um, wars. Well, the different, the different species don't like each other to be at the feeder at the right. same time. Coming soon to Discovery <laughs> Travel Channel. This is the Megala bird. It's a, the world's largest hummingbird. <laughs> world's angriest hummingbird. Um, so then... Oh, ang it's Angry Birds TV oh, no. show. Oh, don't even, don't even start. <laughs> Patent pending. Um, so yeah, so the hummingbirds come up and they'll, they'll fight. But I didn't realize they make sounds. Like they yeah. have a... They have, they, they make, if you ever hear a real high-pitched squeaking sound... <laughs> and it's yeah. percussive. Yeah, it's that's hummingbirds. So I, I like this is I was really excited when this Lego kit came out because I like birds. So I don't feel like I should swap with you. No, you're <laughs> good. I, 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 as I mentioned, I literally have my own at home. So. <laughs> so you really have you have a, a a serious unhinged Lego addiction at this point. Now, now when Jean and I build this kit, she's gonna walk up and she's gonna look at the birds and she's, we're gonna do the math in our head and I'll be like, there's two, there's three birds and there's only two of us, but. I can give her the Blue Jay without having lost anything. Wow. Wow. Because that's love. That's spousal management, dude. You can save one for the child. <laughs> the child, when this the child is, is ready. Are you kidding? Look at this thing. It is an enormous choking hazard. You can, I'm you, saying when the child is ready. The beautiful thing about, about Lego is that when the child is ready, she can disassemble them and then build <laughs> her own. That's... <laughs> Am I wrong, Patrick? No. This, that's the way to teach your child. Yeah. Yeah. I, I suppose. If you want to play with Daddy's Lego, first you have to take it apart. Yeah. He, I saved the instruction manual for it's you. It's starting to so sound like a, a movie recently. Um, which one? Is it? Does that? Am I? Hold on. Am I Seth Rogen here? Uh, no. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Did you want to be Seth Rogen? I don't think so. I think I'm too old to be a man child at this point. <laughs> one would hope you have children. Well, yeah. once you have children, you should stop being a man child. Actually, be, having children makes being a man child even more fun because you can play with toys again. Nobody judges you. All right, oh, there's so many. It's always surprising how many different types of pieces there are that go into a kit. And the inventory of, of Lego is well, it's, vast. It's funny, if, you've, if you grew up with Legos in the 70s, mm -hmm. and then you check back in, like they started in the 80s, they started to get really crazy. But if you, if you check out, if you had Legos in the 70s, which is basically bricks and flats, and yeah. and then you, you see the stuff now, or you go into the Lego like, what store. What the hell is that thing? Yeah, that's it's crazy. Where's where that one? It's got like stumps <laughs> on the side, and you're just looking around, going like, "Well, they do the. Have you ever been to the Lego stores where they have the big oh, like, yeah. you know, buy eight pounds of Legos for twelve dollars? How it's much all the Lego most... can you cram into a cup? Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a strategy for maximizing the cup volume. 
<laughs> I was trying to explain that to a five-year-old a few years ago. It it's was, like, no, you just put more in. It's like Mongolian barbecue. <laughs> but for Lego. Don't eat breakfast. But you have to have something in your stomach, That's otherwise right. you won't be able to digest. Or, we, we, went, we made a poor lifestyle choice and went to a Vegas buffet immediately before going to see Penn & Teller in, at CES this year. And um, the the everyone around us was drinking orange juice, and I think I was, was I the, did you did you know the secret there, Norm, or no? No, I did not know the secret. Yeah. So what the is the secret? Secret of orange juice at buffets is that I think the theory is that the acid will will what? help is that settle real? food in your stomach a little bit faster. What? So you can pack more volume in on top of it. No way. And most of the people drinking the orange juice were like. What appeared to be about 95 pound women. So, well, there's also a lot of people that say that drinking orange juice will prevent um, inflammation that causes you to gain weight, and that actually has some scientific evidence behind really? it. Really? Huh. Yeah. So if you're like horking down a cheeseburger and you don't want to have a heart attack, uh, drink some orange, drink orange juice, juice with it. With it. Huh. There's a little more science in that, although I think a lot of the later science on that was funded by the orange juice industry. Yes. Or the hamburger industry. Or maybe uh, both. Or maybe both by that point. But there was certainly the early the early research was actually seemed to be fairly honest. I'm just waiting for the point where we get to the point where we know the cheeseburgers are healthy and we should avoid broccoli. Well, you know the 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 carb and I like broccoli. <laughs> yeah, broccoli is fantastic. The, the 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 we're on the the waxing part of fat is bad now. <laughs> But right. carbohydrates are bad. So now, I can eat all of the beef fat I want, but yes. I can't have bread. I've transitioned from oatmeal every day to back to eggs every day, so it's like I'm 12 again. Which I'm not complaining, because I like eggs. Who doesn't like Who eggs? Wasn't the, the, the eggs commercials? The, the eggs, incredible edible egg? The eggs are good for you. Oh, eggs, are not, eggs are not bad for you. Back well, in the 90s. Well, it's so funny, because so much that was something that came out recently. So much of the science was basically bad interpretations of papers by broadband media in the 70s and 80s, and that radically changed the diets of Americans. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Well, yes. That, I guess that's a little more real than my theory, which always was that the food pyramid was a scam put forth by the government in the 60s to uh, encourage people to, to, to sustain the American farmer. You must inverse the pyramid. Yeah. Turn it upside down. <laughs> All right. Uh, Are you done I'm going by Nolling. And I have Will way more. Is I'm still taking his time. Taking my time. Nulling. Uh, this isn't a race. Very, very pretty Noling. Uh, Patrick, you see the Patrick's workman like over Will there. Will is uh, I'm just. Th that's that's proper Noling. I'm technique. going extreme Noling here. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just I just, just separated on by <laughs> by area, the size and shape and color of the the pieces. This isn't actually a thing we do. We're just we're, this is just a, all an incredibly elaborate setup for a joke, Patrick. <laughs> Be afraid. All right, and so I'm going to get started as well yeah. with the building. I'm going to be the last one to finish this. So, yes, Patrick, sir. tell us about uh, your new project. Oh, man. Yeah, your so new stuff. My new stuff. So, I'm working on a show called, weekly show called Tech Thing. T E K T H I N G. T E K T H I N G. Would you believe that T E K is uh, T H I N G? Tech Thing with a K is about uh, $2,192 cheaper than, uh, no, more expensive. No, let, Tech Thing is cheaper than Tech Thing, T E C H T H I N G, which is about $2,300 or $2,400. Really? Is William Shatner involved with your thing at all? Uh, not currently. <laughs> okay. Is that, I mean, one of the, is that one of the, the goals? <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's a, a weekly tech video podcast? Show. Yeah, it's kind of like the Mickey Mouse Club for Geeks. Okay, um, I like that. Shannon Morse and I host it. Uh, you know, what are we talking about this week? We're going to be talking about sort of my first drone. The, the I've spent a bunch of quality time with three different drones uh, over the last month, including a lot of quality time. You, you mean multi rotors? Quads, multi rotors, drones. You're right. These are not self flying vehicles. Well, they can be. If, if they can, if they can be. Decidedly not. I assure okay. you. Okay. <laughs> they could be. Were, were I to put the effort into. But yes. I for one welcome copies. our new, uh, you know, killer robot overlords. Well, my wife worked on a, a, a FAA program um, that was setting up the origins of how they were going to manage airspace for drones, for commercial drones a few oh. years ago. Oh. That sounds um, like an interesting project. Librarians end up in really interesting places. Hmm. Um, hmm. 
I, All I, right. I don't. And uh, I feel like I'm in a dangerous territory with 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 that statement, so I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> well, this is also the woman that that uh, uh, is this a family friendly podcast? Uh, no, well, we're untested, <laughs> so we're building Lego. We p potentially ruined Christmas with the last Lego uh, build we did in ways that we will not get into. Um, but people were profoundly upset about. Oh my goodness! People were not upset. Uh, person was upset. Anyway. Um, mistakes were made. Then we I won't tell you about lessons. the about the the T-shirt involving the learning to be had from the nocturnal habits of librarians. We can we can talk we can, we can talk about that. That's <laughs> very good. episode. We can talk about it. <laughs> the one that's is that going to be the the blue episode? Yes. Yeah, I'm working on the blue episode right now. If you know what I mean. <laughs> um, I got a lot of blue pieces over so here. So the format of uh, the show is. Uh, an hour long show? No, it's actually about about 25 minutes is okay. kind of the sweet spot um, where we can do, we do a bunch of viewer questions, product reviews, um, we get hands on with stuff. Um, Helping people figure out what they should buy and what they should not buy. Yeah. And, uh, and the, how to fix the stuff that they have that's broken. And at this point, the tagline for the show is we make technology behave. <laughs> okay. Um, I can get behind that. And, uh, you know, it's uh, or at least we try really hard to make technology behave. Technology tends to have a mind of its own. Not that you guys would know that feeling, because mm -hmm. um, everything always does what it's supposed to. It tested. You, um, you know, <laughs> occasionally things fly into other things. Sometimes 3D printers stop working for no apparent reason. It's all good. <laughs> it's oh. Tuesday. I'm not going to print anymore. That is a thing that happens on a fairly like, alarmingly like regular basis. That's, that's beautiful. Yes. yes. The, ten the use of a tentacle for the flower. Is that, that looks like a uh, so one of the one of the um, Cthulhu. Ten wow, you are really building fast there, Patrick. I, I don't really get uh, uninterrupted time at home, so when I get uninterrupted time, I just sort of go into scary productivity mode. Fugue state. I, I have I have a it's like a branch. <laughs> I'm finished knolling almost. Well, well this. Your bird's going to be on a spit? Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. Roast that. Yes. Very um, small. But yeah, so it's a lot, it's mostly driven by viewer questions. So, we, we, you know, we talk about two factor authentication for LastPass this week. Oh, that's cool. Um, and there's actually hardware tools now to do two factor authentication for LastPass. There's so, a LastPass client for OS X now, too. Yes, right? they just that's came out new. with a native client, so you don't have to deal with sort of the webby kind that of is stuff. happy. Yeah. Uh, if you're not using a, a password manager, you really should consider it. It'll change your life, or um, at least make it more secure. Well, the thing, the thing uh, that I tell people on password managers, because I did, I switched to la, uh, one password mm -hmm. a few years ago, because I, I the places that I need that are primarily Mac places, so right. I went with 1Password because it's the, it's the Mac side of that. Um, and once you, like the first two weeks are terrible. Yes. And then after that, it's, it's a incredibly, incredibly positive and easy thing to do. Well, it's, it's yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of, and you're absolutely right, because you have to sit there and you have to enter in the passwords for all of your stuff. Or and you randomly generate new ones. Yeah, and yeah. go through the process of changing the ones that were the bad passwords you had before. Yeah, yes. and there's, so there's this process of, like, I use that as a password, then you do the security analysis, and it tells you to pretty much change everything because you suck, and then you change the passwords, and it manages the passwords. What's really cool is you can link it to other people's accounts. So, you know, if you guys are, you know, if, if you and I were running LastPass and we had mm -hmm. a shared corporate account, I could set it up so that I could automatically change the password for all of us in LastPass oh. or for the banking That's account that my wife and I share. Um, so, and useful. they can change it across like the phones and the laptops, Windows and OS X, and that's That's incredibly killer. useful. Do they, does, the, does the iOS client have um, Touch ID now? Because that, that was also when I just got the iPhone okay. like five days ago. I, so you're new. I'm, I'm new, so I'm still. Uh, well, I'm laughing because like all of my, all of my. It was kind of funny. It, it decided to do my settings from my old phone, mm -hmm. uh, my contacts from my old phone, and five thousand pictures going back to as far as two thousand eight from my old phone. Oh boy! Nice. But didn't load any of my applications from my old phone uh, onto it. Oh, you got iTunes. <laughs> you got iTunes. Yes, you need to sync with iTunes. Um. um Oh, I synced with iTunes. <laughs> the uh, the the thing that's weird that's happened has now because I I do for my last pass for my mm -hmm. one password I do a passphrase, so I use a like a thirty character long sentence that has some letters and numbers and right. symbols and stuff in it, but it's a it's a nightmare to type in on a touch keyboard. So now all of a sudden, 
with with uh, Touch ID on uh, on uh, iOS right. and and being accessible to applications, all of a sudden the iPhone is the easy place to use one password. So you have to type that every time on your browser. On my desktop, it's no problem. It's just, you just bang it out, and it takes yeah. like three seconds. And I and Jeez. I have it set so that it doesn't time out until I log out the next right. time. Wow. So, which is fine. You know, it, it's it's. I'm looking for secure enough, not perfectly secure. Mm. Well, it's just kind of funny. So we're we're producing um, we're producing tech thing up at the Hack House, the Hack Five House, the warehouse up okay. in, uh, in Richmond, and you know nothing, nothing, nothing amplifies your desire to be secure quite like hanging out with a bunch of people who do really intense things. Um. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you you've been, have you ever been to DEF CON? Yes, I yeah. went to. Did you Probably take any electronics with you? I pretty much, uh, man, my first DEF CON was maybe 98 or 99, 2000, somewhere wow. time around there. Okay. And I literally, I will not turn on anything. I will not turn on a phone pretty much anywhere near DEF CON itself. Um, that seems wise. I will not use any wires. I will not use any ports. Um, <laughs> yeah, those, US, <laughs> those USB ports hanging out of the wall in the, in the, in the cafe. Those are probably not so good these days. Yeah. Well, I also I won't use you know I won't use ATMs inside of the hotel uh, where where DefCon is going at. Jeez. Well, it's, it's like it's like going to a foreign country. Well, no, their rules are like they're pretty good about not burning the locals. Yeah. Except you know. Was it in Vegas? Yes. So, well, imagine so it's it's funny. It started out as a couple thousand people, and now I think it's something insane, like ten or fifteen thousand people. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm afraid of it, frankly. I'll you know, be so the you don't well, want to get outed as the journalist either. Well, no, they actually make you wear. Uh, there's like yeah. people badges and media badges, and and uh, so they're 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 pretty. You know, it's kind of funny because there was an incident several years ago where some camera operator thought he was going to be smart because the. You have to ask permission before you videotape or take mm -hmm. a picture of anybody at DEF CON because mm -hmm. there's people there who do really intense things in scary parts of the world, um, you know, for the three letter agencies. Or there's people who just don't want to have their picture taken for their own personal reasons or privacy reasons. Um, and part of being at DEF CON as a journalist uh, or a representative of the media is to, uh, you know, respect that. And the guy thought he was being clever because he was holding the camera down around his, you know, leg. Yeah. But, you know, everybody pointed out to him that the red LED was still on. Oh, my God. Oh my I think God. that's like the, the, the yeah. most novice move. Um, yeah, it was, it was, you know, you know, you, you probably got the combined brain power of a couple dozen PhDs in the surrounding yeah. hundred yards. He's um, not invited back, I assume. No, they got bounced, actually. Um, in a very public and I think an embarrassing format. I mean, they also do like, I haven't, like I said, I haven't been there in a few years. Uh, actually, finally getting back there this summer. Um, the Wall of Sheep was always a classic thing where anybody whose password had been cracked or account access had been cracked because while they were using the networks. And they would sit there with a big like projection screen and they would list all of the information they had captured from the people oh my this underneath is, the Wall this of Sheep is, heading. This is the oh, reason. Oh, that's scary. That I am afraid to go to DEF CON. There's no reason you don't need to be afraid to go to DEF CON. Some of the most amazing stuff I've ever seen. Like I, I learned how to, you know, how people can repair hard drives, you know, and, and um, um, there's, I've seen amazing demonstrations. The first time I saw lock picking was at DEF CON. The first time I saw mm. really hardcore hard drive repair in, in terms of like rebuilding the stacks and stuff. Um, and the guy was there, you know, does it professionally. He did a huge like, you know, hour long presentation, running people through the beginnings and how to learn more and where to go for that. Um, that kind of stuff is really interesting, but the 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 wall of sheep is the thing that. Well, don't try terror. to access the Wi-Fi network, you know, <laughs> in the middle of the DEF CON. Generally, area. good advice, I yeah. guess. You know, I mean, there's there's so many other things to do, like, you know, turn your Wi-Fi off, turn your Bluetooth off, or just take notes on a, you know, sheet of paper or something. Yeah. But paper. yeah, people. It's. I know. I I remember that. <laughs> I'll tell you about it when you're older. <laughs> <laughs> it's a staggering, profound waste of trees. Cool. Um, so where can, so people can find you at t e k t h i n g dot com. Is yes, the, that's the TLDR, I guess. Yeah, or YouTube dot com slash c slash oh, tech thing. Eh? I will post my stuff anywhere people want to watch it. Actually, we're finally putting we got a Patreon funding high enough to so we can actually now afford to start an RSS feed and pay a CDN to deliver videos. So. Oh, cool. So you can get video, video podcast style now. 
Yes. Well, people will be like, where's the iTunes feed? I don't want to watch it on YouTube. People like, ask us coming. that all the time. We're like, do you have any, uh, any idea how expensive that is? <laughs> no, thanks. We're cool. Just watch it on YouTube. Use use your browser plugin and rip it off if you have to. That's fine. So Patreon's other place that you yeah. can, can find you guys. And... Patreon.com slash tech thing. And uh, actually, it's it's been, uh, it's exciting. Because, um, you know. Well, it's, I mean, you're doing something because you have people have the ability to give you money to do something that they want you to do. Yeah. It lets you make that thing do the first two years without having to take money from somebody who's going to then control what it is that you do. Yeah. Or be and, like, you know, we yeah. need to broaden this out. Yeah. <laughs> to what? Yeah. What exactly? We have notes. <laughs> it's always what you want to hear. Yeah. My running joke when I worked at Tech TV is as long as they're complaining about my clothing, they're not complaining about the content, they're screwing <laughs> up the show. <laughs> you know, we'd like getting more plaid. And here I am, Mission still wearing plaid. <laughs> oh my goodness. You were the early wave of the San Francisco hipster plaid. Thank you for that, Patrick. Oh, first use of the brick separator. Brick separating. This Nor is something made that I the never first grew up mistake. with. Oh yeah, we should show that. I didn't realize. Have you seen this? I have not seen oh, this. Oh, the brick separator. Take <laughs> two pieces of Lego and smush them together in the tightest way possible in a way that would be difficult to separate them. And then, oh, I have to. Yeah, they're stuck. <laughs> Do I you try the other way? You're 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 good with tools. Just experiment. Ironically, <laughs> do your 2001. There, there we go. go. There you go. There was still some fingernail in there. I saw. Well, it's an assist. It. I. I use every tool in the toolbox, whatever That's it true. takes. Get the vehicle back to Mex One so we can get it back home. So how much is a brick, brick breaker? Brick, brick separator. Brick separator. It comes with the kit. It comes with the kit. A certain dollar value. Yes, I have. I have a, like a cup, uh, a coffee mug full of them. So basically, I'm not buying expensive enough kits. Basically, everything over about thirty bucks or something that has lots of flats and singles, like uh -huh. the, then then that's when they usually put it in. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's it has revolutionized. <laughs> Lego building. No um, more some, torn fingernails. Some of those architecture kits, I don't know if you've seen them, but like the... They're the, beautiful. They're really pretty, and they you desperately need a brick separator <laughs> in order to make those work. I can see where like a minor mistake in falling waters is going to cost you the yeah. rest of the day in separating little flat pieces. Exactly. That's when you just are like, well, this, we'll just make this one good enough. Puddling water. So I grew up, I grew up in the same, same time you did. We're about the same age, Patrick. Yes. Um, and when I was a when I was a wee lad, Lego came in bins and it was multicolored and there weren't kits. Yes. Do you have thoughts about this as someone who has a child, ch children that are older? My my daughter is really into Duplo. What is Duplo? Duplo is the big fat Lego. Yeah. Like the Lego for it's toddler non, Lego. It's non choking hazard Lego. Starter Lego. Okay. You, you can give it to them when they're really little. Like we gave. I think I think my daughter got her first. Uh, Duplo set at Christmas when she was about a year old. And at first she just kind of like bang them together because they make a good noise. <laughs> but now she's actually assembling them into stuff, and, and which is amazing to me that a two-year-old is yeah. able to do that. But she's, well, you always gave two-year-olds blocks, right? Yeah, well. And stacking exercises, yeah. and then there's like the sort of hipster toys. Like we have some of these where it's these incredibly beautifully manufactured hardwood stacking blocks that have no sort of, you know, crisp edges, so they have to work really hard to balance them. Oh. And, uh, wow. I, okay. We, we, do, have, we have moments. <laughs> I haven't seen that one yet. And, the, and if the grandparents want to go nuts, we sort of steer them towards stuff. I mean, my, my boys also have wooden swords too. Nice, um, nice. The from the from uh, the geek cheek ones or the no. There was a there was a company making them, uh, selling them on uh, Etsy and in a, in a bunch of local stores. Okay. And first, we got them the daggers, which got me a lot of really strange looks. <laughs> I can imagine wooden daggers. Well, the one that really got me strange, I, I tweeted out a picture of my wife took of me and my son operating a jackhammer on New Year's Eve, <laughs> um, um, breaking concrete in the backyard because nothing this, says let's end this year. This is why like, I like busting you, Patrick. Concrete. <laughs> oh, that was also among, among other reasons, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know. This he, this, this is an experience I would have had in my youth. Oh, it's awesome! Like, and, and it's 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 why you are who you are. My right. dad hurling me at a tractor uh, 
with a busted water pump and saying, make it run. Well, you know. I knew how to operate a tractor before I could reach the pedals to operate the tractor, right? <laughs> um, growing up on a farm helps. It's a useful thing. The, uh, the, uh, but the, uh, um, but somebody was really like, that's so dangerous. And I'm like looking at the picture. I'm like, he's, he's, he's wearing, you know, ANSI rated eye protection. He's got really amazing ear protection. He's got gloves on. It was probably an electric jackhammer too, right? It, it's this crazy like Bosch computer controlled jackhammer. It's like, yeah, nice. yeah I mean, literally like, you know, you, you look at things and you're like, I don't understand how a, a, a processor could be particularly in your like, Really? Wow. Let's do that again. So you don't have to use your belly to kind of bounce it down? It, it literally, like, I, I could hold it with one hand and maybe wow. put, like, a little bit of weight on the other side of it, and it would just kind of do its thing. Um, oh, man. You know, but, you know, and he was hand over hand on my hand, so, you know, in the picture. So it wasn't like he was, like, you know, out of control, six-year-old with a jackhammer of doom. <laughs> but somebody was like... That's like a, that's like a comic, six-year-old with a jackhammer. <laughs> that's being confused like with copper. <laughs> um, it's like an early Judge Dredd version. The, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, and somebody was just like, "That's so dangerous! How could you let your child do that?" I'm like, I was running a chainsaw alone with no ear protection, no gloves, no <laughs> eye protection, uh, in sneakers and jeans when I was like 13 years old. Like, I don't. Well, think that might be a bit much. You know, the chainsaw. I, I well, chainsaw at six too much. Chainsaw at 13. Probably okay. It depends on the 13 okay. year old, yeah. right? But it was, it was the manliest I mean, man in tech. I know some 30-year-olds <laughs> that shouldn't be operating chainsaws. I know some 13-year-olds that probably should be able to drive. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, I'm Definitely not ready to hand my son a chainsaw. He is not quite ready for that Just yet. get him baby's first chainsaw. They have those. I know. The little Bosch kit at Costco. <laughs> is it actually a chainsaw or is it just a toy? Uh, it's a toy chainsaw. Okay. And, like, you know, fake saw and stuff like that, which led to a hysterical... Conversation uh, where a friend of mine was like, So he doesn't have any toy guns, but he's got a toy chainsaw. <laughs> I was like, Let it go, man. <laughs> in San Francisco, man. <laughs> yeah, the toy trucks you get here are toy recycling trucks. They're, they're pretty trucks. awesome. And they're made out of recycled materials. Yes. We, um, somebody gave, gave my daughter a, um, I think one of my, one of my in laws gave her a John Deere, like a little John Deere, like a huge combine. Like yeah. the kind of tractor that they use where they do real farming, not yeah. the kind of track farming that I did when I was a kid. Um, Agribusiness. Yeah, like like in some places the corporate overlords tell you what to plant and where. Yeah. Um, Happens just south of here in a really big way. That's true. We drive by it every time we go to LA. Um, yeah, that thing's rad. Like it makes sounds, it beeps. When you roll the wheels, it makes beeping sounds. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. We don't do a lot of toys that make noise, although getting sort of the trains has kind of kind of got my wife comfortable with the idea that toys can make noise without oh. driving her completely insane. But the, uh, it was amazing like finding vintage, like looking at plastic Tonka trucks and mm -hmm. then realizing that there was an entire insane array of uh, Tonka toys on um, eBay. eBay. All the old wood, all the old that metal ones. <laughs> Well, the metal, the metal Tonka toys, if you're, if you're young enough that you didn't have metal, huh, that's interesting. The, oh, there they are. Uh, that you didn't have metal Tonka trucks, it was a completely different thing. You could sit on those things and ride them. Like, I remember sitting on top of a front end loader and literally sitting on the cab and using the front end as a scoop as I was kind of crawling right. along. You, know, you could stand on them. Baller. You could use them as a... Improvised jack stand. Yeah, you can use them to kill your your playmates. It was all good. Whatever worked. Um, <laughs> you learned to respect the toy. Yeah. Well, and they were, and when they pinched you, man, they pinched you. Ooh. There were blood blisters. Wasn't the kind blood. of thing you walked away from. <laughs> I just had this moment where I realized exactly how the hummingbird's going to come together, and I'm really excited. Yeah. So that's just like, that's, that's wait like, a minute. That's the, this, this is insane a moment. Because that's one of the the great things about. I think Lego, they design the instructions, so there's a sense of discovery as you're building it. It's pretty cool. Oh, that's what the part I'm building. So are they designing these manually or with computers? They have CAD. Manually. But they also do manually. So they once they do it manually, as I understand it, most of the time they do the initial build manually, and then they can put it together in CAD and maybe change stuff around. Mm -hmm. The instructions are all generated out of there. 
Um, so literally, there are master builders. Yes. 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 We know some. We have met several. Um, and they're they're. It's interesting because we we've talked to some people about like the hiring process, mm -hmm. how they pick people to hire, and oh wow, this is this is pretty good. So the, the master builder is actually an official title that's not necessarily. Uh, a, the person who designed the kits. Right. There are set designers and there are also master builders. Oh, master okay. builders is a certification uh, process that gets you the job to design like the sculptures at Legoland or at toy stores. Oh, wow. Um, so there's like a level beyond the kit designer. Yeah. Uh, or they sort they, of. They're, they're, some master builders eventually become kit designers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, the other way around as well. I. I so Lego is career is what we're talking about now. So so Lego, when they're hiring you to come to Denmark, Denmark? Denmark. And work on Lego, it seems like what they want is a basic level of building skill mm -hmm. and then culture fit. And so, people who apply are not necessarily you know, toy makers or... Right, some of them are engineers, some of them are architects. That makes sense. Um, like they don't, they don't only take people who, when you go to like a Lego conference, like Bricks by the Bay or something like that. Which if you haven't <laughs> taken your kids to, by the way, that's a that's a wonderful afternoon. Um, then uh, you I feel like I should be taking notes. <laughs> well, you know, it's all gonna be on the internet, so you can. It's true. I, mean, I don't think we've said anything too horrible yet, so uh, you can even put the. Put, well, I don't know what your rules are on screens. You know, we are in California, um, but anyway, the upshot is, Bricks by the Bay is good. Uh, but the people that they hire to build kits are not necessarily all Lego like enthusiasts. incredible Lego master builders when they come in. Got it. Yeah. They made us people that ha have an interesting design perspective. Yeah. Being able to build a giant, you know, twenty thousand piece right. spaceship or a, a you know recreation of a scene from Lord of the Rings, or, yeah, does not necessarily um, this isn't exactly the, necessarily the skill they're looking for. I'm just um, excited with the idea of telling my son that if he works really hard, you might become a professional Lego engineer. Yes. A, a Legoist? A Legoist. Legoist? Is there a French version? Probably. Yes. We, are, we are dilettantes in the. <laughs> we build kits. Yeah, kit builders! <laughs> wow, I didn't even see these pieces go in. You're in the zone, man. You're there. I've got one wing. <laughs> oh, brick separator. Oh, that. Thank you. <laughs> Most master builders spend years getting their mind to the point. <laughs> yep. Well, one of the one of the tasks they have to do is build, in a limited amount of time, a perfect sphere, with Lego, a ball, <laughs> and they see how you construct it, and then wow. once you're finish building that, you have to roll it. And it has to stay in one piece. I stay in one piece and maybe oh, roll as wow. straight as possible. Like, think about the challenge of yeah, there's, that. There's a television show I want to see. What they don't talk about is that, you know, for every uh, Lego, every person who applies to be a Lego builder, you know, the ones that don't make the cut and then are, are killed on site. I was going to say, is it like the British Navy it's where a, you fail the captain's examination? It's, it's, well, no, submarine it's, captain's it's, examination, they give like you a the, bottle of whiskey and you're never allowed in the submarine again? The wine uh, small <laughs> really? A yeah. application. Oh, wow. That was, the, that was my understanding. The internet can probably verify that or not. But the internet, eh? The internet. Have you seen the documentary about the, the wine sommeliers? The, the crazy culture of the that... that I it, haven't had like a chance the, to finish watching that one yet. It's crazy. Yes. The people who devote their entire lives to describing wine and be able to tell the history of wine so they can create pairings and Well it's about a shared a shared language for sen senses. And the the they have to be creative in how they describe flavor and smells yeah. and Yet still be understood by well, the but yeah, but be consistent with the expectations of everyone around them. This is fresh cart, fresh cut garden hose. <laughs> My favorite one. Fresh cut garden hose. Um, trying to decide if that man made it or did not make it to master sommelier. Yeah, you know, a little from column A. It's it's in the documentary. I'm not gonna spoil. It's on Netflix.
that unfortunately we're in the middle of a multi-season Good Wife episode. Are we, uh... My wife is obsessed with that My show. wife and I went down that hole. <laughs> it's that, that show is much better than I expected it to be for its origins on network TV. The writing is spectacular. It is it's really one good. one of the most critically acclaimed shows on television right now. The, yeah. the Network order, not network. So we're probably midway through the second season now. Mm -hmm. My only complaint is that through the entire first season, it seemed like she always solved stuff because her power was listening and connecting to people. Right. You know how CBS shows, always, you always have yes. some sort of power, whether it's that you're really good at math, or you have you're psychic hacker. powers. Her right? gift was or paying attention. Or you're J. <laughs> right. Her gift was that she can really empathize with people. Not like the other lawyers. Not like the other lawyers. She's not a bad lawyer. And she's been through some bad stuff, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a, it's a fine TV program. I think we are getting close. I'm uh, what are you guys? On the final few dozen pieces, let's yes. say. Yes, perfect. I'm a little frightened because I have extra pieces. You should never have extra. You should. Oh, you should. Oh no, have you extra should pieces. have some extra pieces. So uh, this is also an interesting thing. Um, the way Lego packages uh, these pieces, they don't. They don't. You know, a machine does it obviously, right. but it's done uh, by weight for some of the pieces, really? and there is a margin of error that is acceptable, um, and that's built in because those are the small. And typically, the extra pieces you get. All the small ones. Studs so usually and one by get one flats. Margins of error in production. I get dead pixels on a screen or something. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little more pleasant. Oh, hey, we have some extra Lego. Cool. Okay. I'm going to build a tree. That's a nice looking hummingbird, Patrick. Thank you. That is insane. Wow. I like the flower. Did you think today you were going to be making flowers? No. Probably... I'm doing. I'm just laughing because we were, you know, we were listening to one of those hummingbird fights we were talking about earlier yesterday. Oh, they're so fun. Angry hummingbirds. They, um, they'll. We we when we were introducing my daughter to camping last summer, <laughs> um, we figured rather than drive someplace that was far away that would sure. be a real pain in the ass to go home from when mm -hmm. she woke up at three o'clock in the morning wouldn't go back to sleep. <laughs> we would just put the tent up in the backyard right. and then see how it goes for a couple of nights. And the best, the best part of it was laying in the hammock with the baby on my chest and the hummingbird zooming around us like maniacs the entire time. She was going, bird, 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 bird. Very cute. Yeah, it was one of the things I missed about the place we lived in San Francisco. We panted, planted, panted. We panted. We planted this. You know, the pantings. Checkerboard of rosemary and. Ooh. Gosh, what was the other? What, what did we alternate it with? Something. Um, but it was just, it was bee crack. Ah. Uh, no, 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 it was uh, really lavender, cool. Lavender, maybe? Yeah, uh, yes, you're absolutely correct. Rosemary and lavender, uh, yeah. about three feet apart, so I could sit in between, like, rosemary, rosemary, lavender, lavender, um, and just watch the bees move. And yeah. when my son got to the point where he could actually be patient, we would go sit out there and watch the bees do their thing. And then, uh, and then the hummingbirds started coming on. And then, we'll, but when we moved to the East Bay, the hummingbird frequency got much higher than it ever did because where we lived in San Francisco was cold and cloudy, and hummingbirds just went other places. Uh, um, the thing, if you want to get more hummingbirds, the thing to plant that grows here and is native and is a cool thing to plant, I think it's native. May, that should probably, may, that may not be true, but the hummingbirds like it. Is this thing called a bottle brush tree? Mm -hmm. um, we and, used to have one in the backyard, and that's that's why you had lots of hummingbirds. <laughs> because when our bottle brush tree got crushed by a falling tree limb, oh no, the hummingbirds went away. And when oh. I pruned it back and it regrew the next year, all of a sudden, shitloads of hummingbirds again. <laughs> so, this is scientifically Science. tested. Science. All right. I think I believe I. Oh, I love the the final piece is the the, the big red chest plate. Oh, nice. Which is what really makes this. Oh, you nice beak. There it goes. I'm on the home stretch here. Sorry, yeah, my, my believe, over yep, The final no. thing is to have your Lego experience, perch. man. This is California. <laughs> awesome. Ah, that's right, a sign. I'll get signs. Very nice. <laughs> and then I accidentally smashed it to the ground. <laughs> 
fine. You can put it back together. It's almost impossible to destroy individual Lego bricks. <laughs> that is not a challenge. That is Patrick. beautiful. <laughs> I know how you operate. <laughs> Probably important to mention this is actually Norm's kit. Is that right? Did I do so? Hey, man, what you do? <laughs> Fantastic. That's awesome. Oh, look at the... <laughs> look at the claws. Yeah. Oh, man. They go, they go around. What the... kind of bird do you have, Norm? This is... Uh, it is it an unladen is... European swallow? No. Uh, they have the, the... It is a European robin. Ah. And then a photo of what it actually looks like in real life. My Latin has gotten so bad. Yeah, it happens to all of us eventually. Calibri thalassinus. And then there's French, which makes my Latin seem really good. <laughs> Fantastic. Rolls almost done. I'm on the home stretch here. So I'll let, at this time, I'll let people know um, we're going to do this for the rest of the week on the site. We have another Ooh. kit that we're going to actually collaborate all three of us on cool. uh, to be revealed tomorrow. Uh, it's an experiment, Lego with friends. Your first <laughs> Lego with friends guest, catching up with Patrick Norton, uh, who also is going to be a contributor on on Tested. Yes. Yeah. So we'll have some some cool stuff, some of your your fun projects they've been working on on, on the <laughs> site. Um, you have a lot of crazy projects. I I yeah. My life. I started realizing it was much easier to write about technology if I was forced to make it run to make my family happy. Mm. <laughs> I realized that when I when I put in the first. Uh, it's like uh, modern home and home improvement. Well, yeah, except I live in a hundred year old craftsman home, so there's a lot of really, and I don't think we'll be talking about like installing toilets on tested mm -hmm. unless <laughs> you guys ask I mean, and con Norman will into it. But the, I, uh, I put a toilet in before. If there's, as long as there's an automated ass gasket. I just. Do you know about the automated ass gaskets? Yes, I've seen them in action in an airport. Uh, which was the second most terrifying toilet experience. My first most terrifying toilet experience was nobody, um, I, under, I, I, was, I was prepared for like the three of the four variations of toilets in Japan. Squat toilets, no problem, mm -hmm. like everything was good. And then I, but literally like in the first 24 hours, I walked into a bathroom and went to sit down and stuff started moving. <laughs> The transforming room. <laughs> well, I was living in a I was living in a part of New Jersey where toilets moving usually meant you needed to beat something to death. Um, it was not my finest <laughs> department. Oh boy! And then you're I was talking just, about rats, just to be clear. Uh, yeah, Probably yeah. rodent, Ro yeah. cockroaches, yeah, the, 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 crocodiles. But in Japan, <laughs> but in Japan, it was this. It was speaking to me in Japanese and moving and their offerings and. And I, well, you know what I mean. Like there's there's instructions and buttons to yeah. press. So what type of toilet experience would you like to have today? I would like to have one that involves a standard classic toilet seat that's non-communicative mm. and doesn't involve spraying cold water on my genitalia. You have to ask for the you have to ask for the kanji symbol water? for reamer, so you know not to hit that one. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I also still remember the first time I saw a bidet. Uh, and the person who was in the hotel room with me. So it'd be the second time I saw a bidet. The first time I saw a bidet was we moved into a house that had very sophisticated owners and uh, the previous owners, and they'd redone the bathroom in this weird mix of like really, in this like, you know, 250 year old farmhouse in, in rural Pennsylvania. And they'd done a really nice job in so much of the house. And then they threw in a fiberglass shower tub, and there was a bidet. And, you know, somebody walked in and turned it on, and it hit the ceiling. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's the beak, dude. That is a beak. That's cool. Blue Jays. Oh. Blue awesome. Jays. We'll get them all together. Yeah, we'll get we'll get a group shot here. I don't know where we're gonna put the group shot, but oh, here we go. We'll here, scoot them all side. There we go. A trio of birds. A kit that you can buy. Um, it's available right now. Right now. Available yeah. right now. Lego ideas. I think it's a really cool program. I love it when people. Tweet about their projects that they want to get. This uh, is made. if past history is any example, you'll want to get these soon if you want to have them because they usually go sell out relatively quickly. Yes, um, and they don't always ma remake the sets. I think these are nice sets for kids. I think this is a good set for kids. Cool. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you guys for Thank having you. me. Thank you, and uh, 
We'll have another Lego with Friends with Patrick Norton on the site awesome. tomorrow for Tested Premium members. Uh, but until then, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.